Well, hello. Welcome to Zen Fits or Strange Conceits. And we're talking here from Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center of the world. In my uh, writing this morning, uh, my meditation this morning was on the Edmund Pettus Bridge and the uh, funeral procession of uh, John Lewis being taken across the bridge, uh, pulled by mules in a wagon. And uh, the, the history of that bridge. Um, so I've been meditating on bridges and writing about bridges, the metaphorical bridge. Um, it, it's throughout fairy tales, mythology, religion, history, construct bridges are so important. Famous bridges, the bridge with the troll under it in the fairy tales, uh, the bridge over the river Kwai. So the title of this talk is The Bridge to Nowhere. So why is the Edmund Pettus Bridge the bridge to nowhere? That's the Zen question. And um, first of all, it was the non it was the dramatic demonstration of King Martin Luther King's nonviolent way to create historical progress. How do you overcome the obstacles to progress? How do you overcome the obstacles to justice? How do you overcome the obstacles to greater unity, to the promised land, to peace, to creativity? How do you overcome the obstacles? How do you remove the writer's block? How do I remove the block to making this talk? when I feel like, oh, what's the use? What's the use? Who, who do I think I, who do I think, can I change the world? Who do I think that I can change the world? Who do you think you are? You see, there's some obstacles everywhere. Uh, how do you overcome them? What's the bridge? Um, so there's so many ways to look at this, uh, but let's, let's look at the, uh, uh, non basically the nonviolent way of Martin Luther King, which people say worked, some say didn't work. Is it still going on? Are people still trying it? Is it applicable to your everyday life? Is it, is it applicable to your everyday mind? I say it is. It's, to me, it's Buddhism or Zen. Uh, how do I overcome negativity? How do I overcome fear? How do I overcome my psychological blocks? How do I overcome the obstacles of me? <laughs> you know, how do I do that? You see, if I, if you know, if this is the obstacle and this and this hand wants it, and so I start fighting it, this two hands fighting itself. I'm arm wrestling myself. How do I stop arm wrestling myself? You see. How do I confront violence, which is the obstacle, which is the block to my flow of life, you see, the obstacle, the dam? How do I remove that if I don't use force, if I don't use effort? Uh, how, do I, how do you get to, how do you get saved if you don't do good works? How do you get enlightenment if you don't meditate? And you don't practice, you see. How do you get rich if you don't put in the effort? How do you get money if you don't get a job? So all of these things, you know, how do you just sit there? That's what most people don't meditate because it doesn't look like you're doing it. Well, what, are you just going to sit there? What good is that? What good is just sitting there? Well, sitting there is a nonviolent way, but you have to understand what it means. So let's take a look at nonviolence. Uh, it's engaged, uh, in other words, the, well, let's look at Martin Luther King. All right. So what he did was engage the obstacle, which was the power, white power struggle, the white power structure of the South that justified itself by being uh, ordained by God. I mean, this was uh, a justified uh, white power system. 
Everybody believed they were doing God's will. So how do you how do you confront that? Um, with violence, do you have a revolt and you get an army and attack it? Or do you confront it non-violently? Which means that you engage the enemy, but without resisting their retaliation. You get beat up. <laughs> You get crucified. You willingly go to the cross and get beat up. Now, what does that do? Uh, well, first of all, in the modern world, uh, it puts it on the media. It puts it in the newspapers. It puts it uh, in the collective mind. And it awakens the collective mind to the true aggressor. See, when, when the demonstrators, the marchers going over the bridge, don't fight back, then the aggressor, having no resistance, exaggerates itself. It's like, here's the, the demonstrators, so they, they just present themselves, and the aggressor releases its anger and there's no end to it because there's no obstacle pushing back. So this oversteps, it over exaggerates, it overextends, it becomes obvious that this is the uh, guilty one here and this is the innocent one. In other words, it exposes the violence. So nonviolence exposes the violence and when exposed, it cannot be sustained. Why? Because there, this, this, this uh, way requires a fundamental trust in the goodness of man. A fundamental trust in the basic decency, the basic goodness, the basic love of humanity and of life itself. If you believe in the fallen man, that man is fallen, uh, this system, this nonviolent way won't work. Um, and this was the way of of Jesus going willingly going to the cross so the demonstrators willingly go to the cross to the lynching to the violence of the dogs and the sheriffs and the police you see why it exposes the injustice because there's a basic awareness a basic trust in the goodness in the awareness of mankind who would be the viewers of this drama, you see? So this triggers an awakening of justice. It triggers an awakening of understanding. It triggers an awakening of a greater unity because it exposes the violence of a contracted unity. It exposes the violence of a contraction, a, a fist, it exposes the violence of the fist that holds to being the one. I'm the one, you see. So Martin Luther King, the Civil Rights Movement began to fall apart when the blacks had black power and it wanted to confront the white fist with the black fist. So now you've got some emotional release. I feel good. But the can just of history just gets kicked down the road. And we're still kicking that road, to kicking that can today. So it's interesting in Portland because Portland basically is a reenactment of the, of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. So you got the moms and the pops standing there protesting the guerrillas. I mean, the, the, the stormtroopers, obviously, stormtroopers, the nameless Stormtrooper, not in Kendall, uh, don't even have a name tag, you see. So this is obvious nonviolent drama <laughs> that exposes the fist of one side, the fist of Trump, you see. So this, you know, historically we're watching a recreation of the, now why is it a bridge to nowhere? Let's get into that before I run out of time. Why is it a bridge to nowhere? Well, the bridge to somewhere 
is always, well, I'm going to be better if I cross that bridge. I'll be, I'll be a better person. Life will be better. The promised land is over there. The promised land is over there. I'll get there. This is crap on this side is greener over there. I want to get so I want the bridge to somewhere, you see, psychologically, is the bridge to a better moment. Is the bridge to where I'll be at peace. Is the bridge to when I'll be somebody. The bridge to when I'll people will like me on Facebook. The bridge when when I'll do something important. The bridge when I'll when I'll, I'll make a difference, you see. I want to get there. I want to make a difference. I'm going to be somebody. You see, that's the bridge to somewhere. But who crosses a bridge to nowhere? Who crosses a bridge that has no goal, that has no better place, that has no heaven? Who crosses that bridge, you see? That's the Zen bridge. That's the gateless gate of Zen. Zen has always got a gate there with no gate. You're not going anywhere. You go through that, you're right back where you were. It's a poem in uh, T.S. Eliot. At the end of our exploring, we come to the place. We must explore, but at the end of exploring, we come to the place and see it for the first, and see where we started for the first time. So that in, in Buddhism, when you get to the other shore, you look back and there was no bridge. There was no river. There was no ferry. You're standing right where you started. You're here. <laughs> what was it all about? I took a bridge to nowhere. I spent all my life trying to get over this bridge to enlightenment or to the guru or to the promised land. And here I am. I'm nowhere. <laughs> I'm nowhere, you see. The bridge went nowhere. That's the, that's the laughter of Zen. That's the laughter. You struggle with the cone and finally you see it's absurd and you just laugh. You fall on the floor laughing. It's the, the bridge to nowhere. You're here. You've always been here. So how you get to there is through the nonviolent confrontation with your own self. That's where Jesus says, you know, don't resist evil. What does that mean? Well, we take life. Well, what am I going to let the bad guy come in and shoot my family? That doesn't mean that. Evil is an obstacle. And evil is you. The obstacle is you. The problem is your mind is in you. The problem is your own other hand, the left hand. And the right hand wants to get unity in the left hand. So I want to be the one. And I want to be the one. I'm going to get you. Because <laughs> only one can remain, you see. But then, whoa, they both belong to me. It's both my mind. The obstacle and the, the, the victim and the aggressor is me. The teeter-totter is me, my mind, you see. So how do I get out of that? Well, I don't resist the other hand. So what happens if I don't resist this hand? What happens if I don't resist the feeling that I'm no good? What happens if I don't resist the feeling that I, that I will not succeed? What happens if I... Don't say it's true. And what happens if I allow it to be there without resistance? Say, oh, I gotta have a better, I gotta have a, a more positive idea of myself. I don't want that negative idea. So what happens if I don't resist it, you see? Well, the negative idea is kind of like the sand of one hand, sound of one hand clapping. It's just fanning my I get fanned by it. <laughs> the negative just fans me because I don't resist it. If I resist it, Try to get rid of it, you see, I get back into the teeter-totter of the mind, and that's my karma. You just kick it down the road in a new form, you see. But if I don't resist, ah, then I just get fanned by it, and it exhausts itself. It exhausts itself, it wants to. It's not getting any resistance. It exhausts itself. So that was the idea of Martin Luther King, to just let... The sheriffs and the dogs and the white power fist exhaust itself. It just runs out of energy because it's not being resisted. It's the resistance that gives it food, you see. This only works in certain situations. But it does work in your own mind when you stop fighting yourself. 
trying, just trying to be better than you are, trying to get over that bridge to somewhere. So take the bridge to nowhere and see what happens. Try it out. Don't believe me. <laughs>